thank you very much for, for joining us today. So today we're going to talk about 2D CAD and, and DraftSite in comparison to you know, the industry leader in 2D CAD, which is AutoCAD, so we're all aware. My name is Glenn White. I'm the Director of Technical Sales at Hockridge Systems, um, based in Vancouver, BC. Uh, before I worked here, I had a background in medical device design, but I've been working with SolidWorks 3D CAD, with AutoCAD, with, with DraftSite 2D CAD and the SolidWorks channel for over 15 years now. I've also got my colleague, Victor Villafane, on the line. Yeah, hey, Glenn, how's it going? And hey, everybody. Very well. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, thank you everybody for joining. Um, so to introduce myself, my name is Victor Villafane. I am one of four product sales managers here at Hawk Ridge Systems. Um, we have a sales manager, product sales manager, kind of for each of, uh, um, of the design phase. Uh, the products I manage and the solutions I manage are what we call design solutions, which includes products like DraftSite, um, SolidWorks Electrical, SolidWorks PCB, those are what we uh, consider design solutions here. So th th those are the products I manage. Um, I've been with Hawk Ridge for about four years here. Um, prior to that, um, I was with Autodesk for about 12. So I know a little bit about Autodesk products. Um, I'm, I'm based out of the Bay Area. Um, I'm an SF native born in um, San Francisco. Okay, so the plan for today. We're going to talk about 2D CAD, okay? Um, and our goal is to kind of take you through the pros and cons of different 2D CAD uh, solutions, right? So, you know, first of all, think about kind of the general usage of 2D CAD here in 2021, which is different for everyone, but discuss that. Talk about some of the similarities between kind of AutoCAD and and draft site is an alternative to that. And then the differences, right? They're not identical, they're not exactly the same. Um, talk a little bit about like licensing and packaging and pricing and those, those kind of business objectives that you know need to make sense when you're selecting your, um, your design tools. And uh, that'll probably take us to the end. Oh, I see we got Paul in Lake Tahoe, California. Beautiful place, so thanks for yeah. joining us. Definitely go there often. <laughs> awesome. Hey, so 2D CAD, you know, AutoCAD, draft site, whatever. Um, it's, you know, one of the things that we, we encounter as we talk to our customers is, you know, there's really kind of two schools of, of 2D CAD usage, right? There are other people where 2D CAD, there are whole industries, there are many, many companies, but 2D CAD is the fundamental design workflow for that organization, right? You get your input information, whether that's a prior drawing or a spec from a supplier or a spec from a uh, builder, architect or, or whatever. Um, you get that in, 2D, in DWG, you develop the design in DWG and you send your deliverables in DWG. This normally involves someone sitting in front of AutoCAD or 2D CAD tool hours upon hours every day. Um, you know, a really common workflow and kind of the obvious use of, of these tools. However, what we also see is where 2D CAD is an auxiliary workflow or, or there's, it's auxiliary to the primary design process, right? Your primary design process might be in a, a 3D design tool, but you've got all these use cases where you need to dip back into to 2D, right? And that might be managing legacy product information, right? So the last place I worked was a medical device company and you don't, with things so heavily regulated, you don't go back and redesign old stuff. So if we had to update an old design before say 2001, we did it in AutoCAD because that was the design driver for that object, right? And I've seen that in many companies. I see DWG used to generate a final deliverable for some of the stakeholders. You know, you're uh, the guy that 
you know, does your sheet metal designs might prefer DWG as an input, so you'll you'll save out uh, a DWG file for them. Um, the other end of the chain, you might get inputs from some stakeholders, right, in DWG format that you then translate to um, in, into like the product that you're developing. You might get a, a floor plan of where your machine has to sit in a factory in DWG that you've got to work with. Um, sometimes it's unit used for, for translating and also sometimes for specialized workflows, right? The plasma cutter that you have only accepts the accepts, so you've got to prepare the outline of your component um, in there. So next up, you know, so what we're going to present today is, is draft sign. And really ask the question, and, and this is an individual answer that you'll have, is it a viable alternative to, to an existing 2D CAD tool? You know, and a lot of the time we think it, it is. Um, it has the same functionality for most AutoCAD workflows. It has lower, more flexible pricing, and there's more choice in how you can license it. So we'll go through and discuss that in detail. So, so what is DraftSite? So DraftSite is a competitive 2D CAD product that's been developed as, you know, as an alternative to AutoCAD, right? So it's been developed to, to mimic and to have similar concepts to, to traditional AutoCAD workflows that you're already familiar with, but also stops to think, you know, as they're developing it, they stop to think, hey, could this be done better? Or are some of these things that are in AutoCAD supporting a legacy that doesn't really apply anymore, right? So there's some novel uh, things as well. But, you know, what we find with most people that go from AutoCAD to DraftSide, they, um, initial user experience is pretty smooth. Everything feels fairly familiar, right? And we'll jump over to draft site to take a look, right? So this is the draft site software, right? You've got a, kind of a couple of options here for how you lay it out. If you prefer kind of like a classic AutoCAD layout, you can certainly get to that, right? With the, the toolbar buttons and stack toolbars and all these drop downs at the top. Similarly work with that. But you also have the option for kind of a more modern uh, ribbon type interface um, that's available to you. Um, and it's really your user preference, but you'll see no matter what you do, you know, the familiar command manager at the bottom. And you know, your tools are stacked up in this ribbon interface. I've got them a little bit different, but they're all stacked up and you'll pretty much see every AutoCAD tool that you're used to uh, in the software. Now, some of them are called slightly different things, which is always fun. Um, but, you know, one of the great things here is that it's kind of got a built-in translator. So if I want to use the AutoCAD command purge, and this is right down the bottom of the screen, might be a little tough to see, the command manager will recognize it, but also tell me what the equivalent draft site command is called, right? It's called clean a draft site. Um, if I look for a donut, you know, that's called a, a ring. Um, so you can kind of, you know, you don't, it'll translate for you as you go, which is, which is pretty neat. I think, you know, um, you know M line is called a rich line, for example. Pretty familiar, all the same stuff, right? Your customizations will map, right? Uh, your drawing templates, CWT files, your list routines, your, um, your visual list routines that was just added. Um, your preferences for lines and hatch patterns and fonts and all that stuff will read right in from AutoCAD. And there is also robust API support, extensive API. So you can customize these tools to do exactly what you, you want to do. There are some differences with AutoCAD. And this, this is by no means an extensive list. Um, but, you know, these are kind of the big ones that people stumble upon. Um, 
It doesn't have aliases. They're not currently supported, neither is under a pallets. And there's a, a limitation with creating dynamic blocks. But if a dynamic block has been created, and if you're using that, you can apply them, use them, and you can edit the parameters and attributes and, and layouts of those dynamic blocks. But I think what's most important is last time I presented this, which was probably about a year ago, right, in one of these types of sessions, it was much more stuff, right? Um, so many of these functionalities that are important to 2 dcad uses are rapidly being added. So there were four things alone when I looked at last year's slides that have already been implemented in the latest version of GraphSite. Pretty good to see. Okay, so even like dynamic blocks, that's something we'd expect to see in, in the very, very near future. Now, one, one similarity that I missed, um, and we've got a great question from Tim in the audience. He's asking, are the files compatible between the programs? And the answer is absolutely yes. Your DXF, your DWG files um, are 100% compatible between DraftSite and AutoCAD. People using AutoCAD will not know that you've developed the file in DraftSite or vice versa. Um, and in fact, DraftSite will save back to even R12 um, AutoCAD files. So there's a long, long list of supported formats. Yeah, I think it's actually larger than the current version of AutoCAD on that front. Similarities, you know, pretty much the same. Differences, you know, there's a couple of things that are missing. We're, we're not going to try to pretend it's not the case. And um, if there's a feature that you're curious about, something you really like in AutoCAD that's a little more sort of esoteric, not in the mainstream, when you leave this, you'll um, you'll be presented with a question, right, in a survey, and basically just asking, is there anything you think you'll miss in AutoCAD? Any like thing that you really utilize a lot? Like, um, ask us, and we'll share. You know, if it's a limitation, or more likely. You know, kind of what the equivalent function in order in draft site will be, and sometimes that equivalent is just exactly the same name, right? So, um, but different. Now, there's also some differences with AutoCAD between draft site and AutoCAD that are positive, right? Um, so, I got three tools I want to show you that draft site has that. At time of writing, AutoCAD does not. Now these things are always changing, so it's hard to uh, always keep pace. But okay. one of those tools is called Power Trim. Okay, and this is a tool that anyone who's used SolidWorks might be familiar with. But basically, it's a dynamic trimming tool, so I don't need to worry about um, setting trim planes and all that sort of stuff. Basically, if I drag a line across a line segment. It's trimmed. Um, and if I drag, press shift and drag a line across the line segment, it extends to the next available um, option, uh, to the next available entity, right? That's just super powerful. I use this all the time. Um, a very, very useful tool for quickly, like just sketching a bunch of line geometry and then quickly tidying up exactly what you need. Um, I, I really, really love this tool. I think come to start using this, this will be one that you, you really uh, learn to love as well. Another one that's quite useful is uh, mouse gestures. So, right, so if I take uh, my right mouse button and I depress it and then I move my mouse, in a particular direction, right? Um, I activate a gesture, right? Which will basically select a command for me. Um, it's fully customizable. I can modify this to my heart's consent, content. But it'll activate a command and now I'm in the line tool, right? Now back out of that, now I'm opening a new object. Um, again, this is a tool that I've used in SolidWorks. Very, very powerful for 
you know, activating your most common task and you, you really get used to this kind of like flick of a wrist. I'm doing the line, flick of the wrist again. I'm off to a, an arc or whatever, right? So really, really cool stuff. Um, the command gestures, gesture. will activate the, the ability to define that, basically select commands to put at those quadrants. So that's a tool that I've enjoyed. Uh, the last one here is auto dimensioning, right? We basically can define a window of interest. In this case, I'll just define that with a bounding box. And on the annotate tab, hit auto dimension, and preview and edit, and I'll get a pretty busy sketch here, but um, you know, to a variety of different schemes, I can get that, that dimensioning pattern out, right? So um, can save a lot of work. So it's just kind of a, a very, very small example of you know some of the places where, where innovation um, can help. So while there are differences with AutoCAD, some of them are really, really positive. You know, and we could spend all day um, showing you the interface functions, showing you different things, but you know, as a broad statement, you know, we can say that the draft site supports most of the commands and functionality and workflows that, that AutoCAD does. You know, as we work with our customers that adopt draft site, we get very, very, very few complaints about missing functionality, right? Most common is, you know, what's it called, right? Where do I find it? And it's a case of locating it and that translation on the command bar is, is normally a lifesaver in that situation. As soon as you show someone that, they're, kind of, they're off for most things. Um, you know, they're very, very similar tools, particularly when it comes to 2D design. So, you know, what are your options? Uh, packaging wise, right? So we, we really talk about normally four versions of DraftSite. Okay. And you can go to the DraftSite website and come down to an extensive matrix that lists out, you know, a rich variety of features and workflows, a lot of, lot of detail on here that you can go nerd out on. But really, you know, all the versions have the full 2D design capability. Right? Uh, there's not much difference there in terms of 2D functionality between the different variants, right? It's not like you're gonna get importing PDFs in one version and not in uh, another, you know, assuming you're starting draft site professional. Now, what the key difference is, is between draft site professional and the next level up, draft site premium, is it introduces uh, 3D capability, as well as 2D constraints, which is the ability to kind of link things together in your 2D sketching and line work, so that as things change, other things move with it. Right? Um, so that's the, the key difference between draft site professional and draft site premium, right? 2D only, 2D and 3D. Those licenses are available direct by over the internet. We've shared a handout that has links that you can get access to them. Um, they're named users, a single user, uh, subscription licenses. Okay, so you buy, buy it a year at a time and um, go from there. DraftSite Enterprise is a little bit different. From a functionality point of view, it's basically professional, this DraftSite Enterprise, and um, DraftSite Enterprise Plus is the premium. So you've got that 2D, 3D split again. Um, but what those both of those come with is a deployment wizard for delivering sort of an administrative image to a large number of users in, in one shot, controlling their settings and their workflows. It contains, it has network licensing. So licenses can be shared among a pool of interested users and has access to direct live technical support um, through us at Hawkridge Systems, right? So our team of 
uh, support specialists who are experienced in 2D and 3D CAD, uh, or at the end of a phone line, at the end of a chat window, at the end of a web address or an email, um, whichever you prefer to help. Now, if you have an issue with uh, draft site professional, draft site premium, there is a community of users that acts as sort of a support environment for that. But if you want that dedicated support, you're at the enterprise level. And that can be really important for just kind of keeping things going and making sure you're staying productive. Uh, so I'll so, take this yeah. slide, uh, Glenn. Yeah. Um, so this slide is pretty much a breakdown of the uh, license offerings um, from AutoCAD um, and DraftSite, along with uh, some some pricing comparables, right? Um, automatically, you can see uh, even at AutoCAD LT, the DraftSite Enterprise is a very comparable price point, right? Um, but take it a step further, AutoCAD. Um, you know, even saying DraftSite Enterprise is 80% of that functionality at a fifth of the cost. Um, so, you know, it, it's a very comparable product, obviously, with um, when it comes to the pricing. Uh, but more importantly, it's the license flexibility. So AutoCAD uh, does not today, I believe, allow um, the network licensing usage. So what does that mean to you guys? It means that for each user that needs access to this license, um, they have to have their own term, you know, term license. Um, doesn't have that ne network capability that draft site enterprise can offer you guys where it's shareable. And that's really important. Um, it's really important because, you know, if, if you're not in it all day, you really need a dedicated, you know, license for that one engineer or that one user, right? Um, you know, and, and there are some differences around the support. You know, I, I've worked at Autodesk for several years. Um, you know, SolarWorks has a really robust, um, you know, reseller channel, us being one of them, Hawkridge Systems, right? And where with Enterprise, DraftSite Enterprise, you get that support with us, directly with us, that, you know, that that quick communication um, in, versus with, with Autodesk. You know, I've, I've heard some heard some stories about, um, what kind of support they provide for their AutoCAD products, right? Um, I'm going to get into an example on the next slide, Glenn. So here's an example about um, kind of the the different licenses um, um, usage and, and what what they offer, right? So again, AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT, it's a named user. So you need one license or one term-based license per user, right, for them to access it. So really the question is, you have to ask yourself and your team, and if you're a manager or, you know, ask, ask your engineers, um, really, how long are these guys in, you know, AutoCAD or how long are you using AutoCAD? Um, you know, are you sharing this license or do you have more than one engineer? Well, does it really make sense if you have, you know, five, five design, you know, five person design team? And they're really only in AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT, to, you know, just to open up various things or make markups or whatever it is. They're only in it for, you know, a couple hours a day or just a couple hours a week. You know, do you need five licenses per user, right? Um, no, not really, right? And you don't have that ability to network these licenses anymore with AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT versus with draft site um, enterprise, you still have that ability. You can you can share one license between a team of five, um, you know, especially if you're just, you know, opening up DWGs or opening up those type of files. And even in the perpetual environment, which is you buy it, you own it, and you pay a maintenance on it, um, it's still more cost effective than AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. And that's kind of the key takeaways here is, is really the license flexibility that that draft site enterprise can offer you guys and, and, and the cost savings around that. Yeah, Victor, it really comes back to that thing we introduced right at the top, right? Of, of whether it's the primary workflow, if you got someone sitting at the desktop six hours a day, um, mm -hmm. named user license makes a lot of sense, right? It's kind of, yep. you're getting value from it. But if you're, just using it occasionally across the team for those auxiliary workflows, it gets really hard to justify each person having an individual um, yep. license assigned to them. So. Yeah, I mean, e even in that environment, if you have you know one main user and 
two other guys that need to access it, you know, a couple a couple hours out of the week, you would still only need two, you know, maybe draft site enterprise licenses that you can network versus you would need three AutoCAD licenses if you wanted everybody um, in your group to have access to that license, right? So it, there's, there's still a cost savings there, um, potential cost savings there, um, even if you have, you know, um, really heavy users um, that that use AutoCAD that are in AutoCAD all, um, all day versus you know with DraftSite. Yeah. So um, we've, we've kind of discussed generic. It's great to keep seeing your feedback. We we heard from from Chris just now, um, just really commenting how important the three D tools um, are to to his particular workflow, and also heard from. Others heard from Tim saying, you know, we have other tools for 3D. So like, you know, we kind of have this split and we see it in the industry as well of, of how, you know, these types of tools are used. So that's pretty cool. Now, just get in touch if you're you're interested in, in learning more about DraftSide Enterprise or uh, the other tools. There are active promotions in in play right now so get in touch with us and we'll be able to share those with you um, and draft site professional and premium can be brought directly over the the web so if you start at our page hockridgesys.com products draft site um, you'll be able to go direct to a, to a purchase page for those that brings us to the end of what we were hoping to cover please we really appreciate your time here today um, and thank you for joining us.